I know what I'm doing, and, and, and I'm very confident when it comes to uh, this sport. Well, given that he has broken the world record time and time again, it's not surprising to hear him say that. After all... I think it's mostly confidence. I think that uh, it's, it's hard, if not impossible, to be chill if you're not confident in what you're doing. So, Unsurprisingly, Mondo had a very successful 2024 season. As can be expected, he also concluded the season with a bang. You probably don't need a reminder to know that Mondo Duplantis had a very successful Olympic run this year. Of course, there's the fact that he broke the pole vault world record for the ninth time and won his second Olympic gold medal. As if that's not remarkable enough, with his recent Olympic win, he became the first back-to-back -back champion in the Olympic pole vault since American Bob Richards in 1952 and 1956, a feat that captivated even the competitors he had just beaten. And so, Duplantis is now a two-time Olympic champion, in addition to being a two-time world champion, among other things. Then, there's the Diamond League final he'd been consistently collecting, as if it were nothing. After claiming his second Olympic gold medal in August, he went on to collect his fourth Diamond League trophy. Yep, you heard that right. The double world and Olympic champion capped his beautiful season with a fourth consecutive Diamond League trophy. At the Memorial Van Dam meeting, doubling up as the Diamond League final, he opened with 5.62 meters and didn't vault again until the bar was at 5.92 meters, once again going clear on his first try. No other vaulter managed to clear that height successfully, so Duplantis then raised the bar to 6.11 meters, one centimeter higher than the meeting record he set last year. With what was his third jump of the night, the Swede sailed cleanly over 6.11 meters to defend his title. With this, he was well ahead of second place Emmanuel Corrales' 5.82 meter best. There was a two-way tie for third between Belgian Ben Bruders and USA's Olympic silver medalist Sam Kendricks, with both men also clearing 5.82 meters but having one failure earlier on. As usual, there were expectations that the peerless Swede might deliver a world record-breaking vault after his latest of 6.26M at the Diamond League in Silesia. While Duplantis did not attempt to make history again in Brussels, his 6.11M clearance was good enough for a new meeting record. Afterward, he revealed that he was still feeling the effects of his recent 100-meter victory over 400-meter hurdles, world record holder Karsten Warholm in Zurich. He told reporters, My legs felt terrible tonight and I'm just really tired. It's been a crazy couple of weeks, the race against Karsten, and then I had to jump the day after. That took a lot more from my body than I expected. He added, For context, back in 2023, before adding his 8th, 9th, and 10th world records in pole vaulting, Mondo had taken a keen interest in Warholm's 400-meter hurdles prowess. The plot thickened when Mondo called out the world record holder in hurdles, suggesting they race each other. Warholm, ever the good sport, eagerly accepted the challenge. One year later, the athletics world record holders in the pole vault and 400-meter hurdles, respectively, finally went head-to-head. -head. On the eve of the big Weltklasse Wanda Diamond League meeting in Zurich, there was only one winner of the highlight 100-meter head-to-head when the starting gun fired, Although it had been a toss-up between the two, it was Mondo who crossed the line first. As if not satisfied with breaking the pole vault world record three times within the space of five months, Duplantis ran 100 meters in just 10.37 seconds to beat Karsten in the exhibition race. The event, which took place at Letzigrin Stadium in Zurich, Switzerland, alongside the Diamond League meet, saw Warholm clock a time of 10.47 seconds meaning both athletes registered personal best times. Remarkably, it also meant that both Sweden's Duplantis and Norway's Warholm would have qualified for the preliminary round of the 100-meter at the Paris Olympics. I think we really put on a great show, Mondo said. I hope that everybody enjoyed it because it was very fun. I could do something like this again. After defeating Karsten, Mondo spoke about competing against Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone in the 400-meter after hearing about her ineligibility at the Brussels Diamond League. Again, I heard that Sydney got kicked out of Brussels, so if she wants to race maybe a 400, we'll do an extra event in Brussels day before, day after or something, maybe we fix that. 
Sydney did end up competing in Brussels after being allowed to participate in the meet, but would have to run in events not classified as a Diamond League event. Unsurprisingly, she won both the 200-meter and 400-meter races. Anyhow, the exhibition race between Duplantis and Warholm apparently took a toll on the pole vault star, although that didn't stop him from dominating in Brussels. With 6.11 M, I got a good result, but the world record wasn't meant to be tonight, Mondo said. It's not easy to do better each time. Everything needs to come together. I had some good jumps, and I'm really happy about that. He posted a picture of himself holding the trophy. Diamond League champ times four, he wrote in his Instagram post. As is pretty obvious, the 24-year-old pole vaulter has been at the pinnacle of the sport throughout the 2024 season remaining undefeated in all competitions. Duplantis admitted that his body was feeling the toll of the demanding track and field schedule as the season drew to a close. The pole vault star, who won eight Diamond League events this year and took home his second Olympic gold in Paris, expressed his readiness to unwind after the rigors of such an intense campaign. Now it's time to celebrate my beautiful season. I will drink some good Belgian beers tonight for sure, he said. Looking back on 2024, Duplantis can proudly boast not only of his undefeated record, but also a Hall of Championships. In addition to his Diamond League victories, he clinched the Indoor World Championship title for the second time and successfully defended his Olympic gold in Paris. The Swedish star reflected on the demands of pushing boundaries with every performance. It's not easy to do better each time, he confessed acknowledging the relentless pressure to break records at every competition. The Born to Fly documentary showed Mondo's rise from a promising teenage talent to the greatest pole vaulter ever. The documentary captures Duplantis from the time he was a high school pole vaulter in his hometown of Lafayette, Louisiana. By then, Duplantis, who held several world bests in all age groups from age 7 to age 12, was already a world junior record holder. Film director Brennan Robideau convinced Duplantis' parents to allow him to document the pole vaulter's rise. Robideau, like everyone else in Lafayette, was drawn to and captivated by the sport-obsessed family who had built an entire pole vault pit in their backyard. That marked the start of Born to Fly. There was something magical about a kid embarking on a journey to be the best in something as obscure as pole vaulting. From the beginning, I thought of Mondo as a chess prodigy, someone who excels in something so few understand, said the film's Robido. I noticed immediately Mondo's intensity, especially toward himself, he added. After each jump, it was evident that he was breaking down every little detail, which became a core theme in the film. Mondo, from childhood, had a feel for this unique event. The Swedish-American pole vaulter is thrilled about the documentary that captured his start as a passionate child chasing his dreams. I'm just excited for people to see a different side to a story that people may be familiar with, but don't have a full understanding of everything that goes into my life, Mondo said. The 2024 season may have come to an end, but Mondo Duplantis isn't done chasing greatness, even if his greatest rival is himself. Watch this to see what other athletes are up to.